I'm just gonna come out and say it. If you're a casual listener, then you really shouldn't spend more than $100 on your next pair of headphones or earbuds. In fact, I'd even throw new bedroom producers into the mix. If you're somebody getting into music production, you really don't need to spend more than $100 for your first pair of studio headphones. In fact, here are three reasons why you really don't need to spend more than $100 on your next pair of earbuds or headphones. Reason number one, there really isn't a correlation between price and sound quality. Now, there is this common misconception that the more you spend on a pair of headphones or earbuds, the better they're gonna sound. But that's actually not true. There are studies out there that prove that there is no correlation between how much you spend on headphones and earbuds and the sound quality. Granted, spending a bit more on headphones and earbuds does provide you with better features like better ANC and better app support. But when it comes to the sound quality of a pair of headphones or earbuds, price doesn't really come into play here. And I'm gonna prove it to you right now. Right now on the screen, I'm gonna show you three MDAX charts. Now for the uninitiated among you, MDAX stands for Multidimensional Audio Quality Score. This was developed by Head Acoustics, and it's essentially one of the ways we at Sound Guys evaluate a headphone or earbuds as sound quality. And if you wanna learn more about the MDAX testing process, then make sure to check out this article on our website. Actually, it's over here. But back to the charts. Here we have three MDAX scores for three different earbuds at three different price points. One of the earbuds costs $349, the other costs $249, and get this, the cheapest one costs $29. Looking at the charts, can you guess which earbud belongs to which chart or measurement? You can pause the video here, but I'm gonna give you the answer in three, two, one, here. That's right, chart A, is the measurement from earbuds that cost $29, while chart B shows the earbuds that cost $349, and then chart C, the earbuds that cost $249. Like I said, more expensive earbuds or headphones doesn't necessarily mean better sound quality. Reason number two of why you don't need to spend more than $100, there are just more and more budget earbuds and headphones nowadays that have premium features without the premium price. And here at SoundGuys, we've tested hundreds of headphones and earbuds throughout the years in varying prices. And especially in the last, I don't know, three to five years, we've seen a lot of headphones and earbuds under $100 that have performed really well. But not only do they perform pretty well, they also pack some premium features that you would have normally found in headphones double, triple, or quadruple the price. For example, those $29 earbuds that I mentioned earlier, the Moondrop Space Travel, those feature great sound quality and they have active noise cancellation for $29. That is the same price for a nice meal and maybe a drink at, I don't know, Cactus Club or what's the American equivalent? Chili's? Chili's? Is Chili's? Cactus? Maybe it's Applebee's. Whatever. It, it's... You could get those earbuds for the price of a nice meal at some chain restaurant. Then there's also the Earfun Air Pro 4. For less than $90, you get a pair of true wireless noise canceling earbuds that also feature Bluetooth 5.4 and support for the higher quality LDAC and Aptex lossless Bluetooth codecs. If you want to take a look at headphones as an example, take a look at the JLab JBuds Lux ANC headphones, which go for $79. At this price point, these headphones feature really good active noise cancellation. And in our lab tests, we found that the JLab JBuds Lux ANC reduced the loudness of outside noise by about 81%. Now, what does that mean in reality? Well, this means that these headphones, again, for less than $80, do a good enough job in canceling out noise like loud airplane engines or just the screech of a subway car. This kind of ANC performance was unheard of just a few years ago, but now that you can get it in a pair of over ears for less than $80, that's pretty damn good. Another example from a different brand, there's the Anchor Soundcore Space One headphones. Those headphones feature ANC, they've got Bluetooth 5.3 with support for the LDAC codec, and it also has really good app support via the Soundcore app, which features a really good equalizer tool to help you tune the headphones to your liking. Reason number three for not spending more than $100 on headphones, again, if you're somebody who's starting to get into music making, music production, or basic audio mixing, there are also plenty of options out there for you for studio headphones, at least the closed back kind. You don't need to drop $500 on a pair of closed backs so that you can track and monitor your mixes or mix on the go. There are really good options out there that have actually been around for a while now, and here are three of them. A great beginner pair of studio headphones are the Audio-Technica ATH-M40X. For under $100, these are made of a durable hard plastic. The folding hinges and articulating ear cups make them very compact and easy to store, carry around, bring wherever you go. The removable cable means that you can actually replace the cable if it accidentally breaks or, you know, 
know, just take it out when you're transporting the headphones so you avoid damage. They sound pretty good overall. I actually use them in my own studio. I've used them on film location, sound mixing projects. I've used them for music production. I've used them for voiceover work, for tracking, etc. These are workhorses in the audio industry and I highly recommend them if you are looking for headphones that don't cost too much, but still perform. If you wanna go for a studio classic, there's the Sony MDR7506, with, which have been around since 1991. These studio headphones are relatively inexpensive, but they are a staple in a lot of studios and a lot of mixing engineer setups. Similar to the audio Technicas I mentioned earlier, they're pretty lightweight and compact, and I actually find them a bit more comfortable on the ears than the M40X. I've personally used the MDR7506 in film sets, in the studio. It's really versatile, it sounds good. There's a reason why they're a classic. And Sony actually just updated these headphones with the MDR M1, although those are pretty pricey. So if you wanna save some money and you're just starting out, then yeah, the MDR7506 from Sony, still a great choice even today in 2025. Then lastly, there's the Sennheiser HD280 Pro, which comes in a little cheaper at under $85. Also very comfortable design from a very reputable company. These sound pretty good. They're still used in studios around the world. And it also folds up really nicely and is compact. So again, easy to bring around wherever you go. If you own headphones or earbuds, Buds that cost more than $100. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. There's nothing wrong with spending more to find a product that suits your needs. What I'm saying is that if you are just looking for a pair to get you by, you don't, don't ever feel pressured to spend more than $100 because the options are just really good now. Now, if you are somebody looking for a budget pair of earbuds, I highly recommend checking out our lists of the best, which you can find in this video right here.